हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू साइंस एक्सप्रेस टूडे आवर टॉपिक इज बायोडाइवर्सिटी एंड कॉन्जर्वेशन ओके नाउ स्टार्ट द लेक्चर बायोडाइवर्सिटी द टर्म बायोडाइवर्सिटी वॉज क्वाइंड बाई डब्ल्यू जी रोजन इन द ईयर ऑफ नाइनटीन एट्टी फाइव ओके बट द टर्म बायोडाइवर्सिटी वॉज पॉपुलराइज बाई एडवर्ड विल्सन नाइनटीन नाइन्टी टू ओके Biodiversity that means refers to the variety of life on earth at all its level from genes to ecosystem and can encompasses the evolutionary ecological and cultural process that sustain life okay but here we discuss about the biodiversity conservation biodiversity conservation refers to the protection preservation and management of ecosystem and natural habitats and ensuring that they are functional okay now three main perspective are protection preservation and management now discuss about the objectives of biodiversity three main objectives are to protect and preserve species diversity that means is the number of different species that are represent in a given community then to ensure sustainable management of the ecosystem that means take the concept from sustainability and synthesizing them with the concept of management sustainability has three branches okay the first the environment then the needs of present and future generation and then economy okay now next point restoration of ecological balance and support system okay restoration means an act of restoring or the condition of being restored that means bring back to the former position okay and ecological balance means it is a state of dynamic equilibrium within a community of organism in which genetic species and ecosystem diversity remain relatively stable subject to gradual changes through natural succession okay or it is a step by step procedure so understand this procedure take as example in order to maintain this balance co2 sources have to be reduce and promote tree planting to restore ecological balance okay so three main objectives are to protect and preserve species diversity to ensure sustainable management and restoration of ecological balance okay now here we discuss about the methods of biodiversity conservation two types of methods are employed to conserve biodiversity they are in situ that means on site conservation and ex situ that is off site conservation okay now study detail in in situ conservation when we conserve and protect whole ecosystem its biodiversity at all level is protected we save the entire forest to save the tiger this approach is called in situ conservation or it's called on site conservation okay in in situ conservation refers to the preservation and protection of the species in their natural habitat okay it means that conservation of genetic resource in natural habitats of plants and animal now discuss about the advantages of in situ conservation it preserves species in their natural habitats okay or its own habitat okay it ensure protection to a large number of population it does not require species to adjust to a new habitat so there is a no requirement of accommodation with the new habitat this method of conservation is a cost effective and convenient way of biodiversity conservation that means to easy performance next various living organism can be conserved at the same time and same habitat in the in situ conservation okay these are the major advantages of in situ conservation okay now discuss about the methods of in situ conservation types are biosphere reserve national parks wildlife sanctuaries biodiversity hotspot sacred groups okay these are the major methods of in situ conservation okay now study about the this method first one is is the biosphere reserve 
दे आर मल्टीपर्पज प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया हुई आर मीन फॉर प्रिजर्विंग जेनेटिक डाइवर्सिटी इन रिप्रेजेंटेटिव इको सिस्टम ऑफ वेरियस नेचुरल बायोम्स एंड यूनिक बायोलॉजिकल कम्युनिटीज बाई प्रोटेक्टिंग वाइल्ड लाइफ एंड डोमेस्टिकेटेड प्लांट एनिमल जेनेटिक रिसोर्सेज ओके क्रिएशन ऑफ बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व वॉज इनिशिएटेड इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव अंडर एम ए बी प्रोग्राम ऑफ यूनेस्को ओके एम ए बी प्रोग्राम मीन्स मैन एंड बायोस्फेयर प्रोग्राम ओके नाउ इन इंडिया एट प्रेजेंट एटीन बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व आर प्रेजेंट ओके एंड इलेवन ऑफ देम आर रिकोगनाइज एज ए वर्ल्ड हेरिटेज साइट एंड सेवन ऑफ देम आर डोमेस्टिकेटेड ओके Now discuss about the zonation in biosphere reserve. Each biosphere reserve has mainly three zone: core zone, buffer zone, and transition zone. In core zone, no human activities are allowed. The area is undisturbed and legally protected ecosystem. Okay, so no dis, so no disturbance are allowed in this zone. Then buffer zone, it surrounds the core area. Limited human activity are allowed, like research. education and sometimes our photography are allowed in this zone okay and third one is transition zone that also called manipulating zone it is the outermost or peripheral part of the biosphere reserve where an active cooperation is present between the reserve management and local people for activities like settlement cropping forestry and other economic uses without disturbing ecology okay so from the picture we can easily understand these are the core zone here no human activities are allowed it is a highly restricted zone then outer area is called buffer zone okay here limited activities are permitted and outermost zone is called transition zone or it's called manipulating zone here settlement cropping forestry and other economic uses are allowed but without disturbing the ecology ओके दिस आर द जोनेशन इन बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व नाउ डिस्कस अबाउट द बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व इन इंडिया इन इंडिया टोटल 18 बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व आर प्रेजेंट ओके एंड नीलगिरी बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व इज द फर्स्ट बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व व्हिच आर एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन द ईयर ऑफ 1986 ओके एंड नीलगिरी बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व इज लोकेटेड इन थ्री स्टेट तमिलनाडु केरला एंड कर्नाटक ओके एंड अदर 17 बायोस्फेयर रिजर्व आर Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve located in Uttarakhand, Nokrek Biosphere Reserve located in Meghalaya, Great Nicobar Biosphere Reserve located in Andaman Nicobar Island, Manas Biosphere Reserve located in Assam, Gulf of Mannar Biosphere Reserve located in Tamil Nadu, Dibru Saikwa Biosphere Reserve located in Assam, Dihang Dibang Biosphere Reserve located in Arunachal Pradesh, Panchmari Biosphere Reserve located in Madhya Pradesh, Kanchanjunga Biosphere Reserve located in Sikkim, Kutch located in gujarat achanakmar amarkantak biosphere reserve located in chatrisgarh okay now sesachalam biosphere reserve located in andhra pradesh cold desert located in himachal pradesh agastamala biosphere reserve located in kerala panna biosphere reserve located in madhya pradesh sundarban biosphere reserve located in west bengal simlipal biosphere reserve located in odisha okay these are the 18 biosphere reserve 11 of them are world heritage site and seven are domesticated okay now discuss about the another protected area national park these are limited reserve maintained by the government for the conservation of wildlife as well as the environment okay human activities are strictly prohibited in national park they are mostly occupy an area 100 to 500 square kilometers national park are declared under the wildlife protection act 1972 in india at present may 2022 106 national park are present okay and covering an area 44375.42 square kilometer okay in india the first national park is helai national park now its name is jim corbett national park okay and it is located in uttarakhand hilly national park established in 1936 and it is a first national park of india other national parks are kanha national park located in madhya pradesh gir national park located in gujarat it is famous for the asiatic lion okay ranthambore national park 
located in Rajasthan, Kaziranga National Park, located in Assam, Perian National Park, located in Kerala, famous for the elephant, Angsi National Park, located in Karnataka, Silent Valley National Park, located in Kerala, Kurumara National Park, located in West Bengal, Peen Valley National Park, located in Himachal Pradesh. Okay. Now discuss another protected area or in situ conservation wildlife sanctuary. Wildlife sanctuaries are protected areas meant only for the conservation of wildlife. It limited human activities are allowed such as cultivation, deadwood collection, honey extraction are permitted here. Okay. And sometimes tourism are allowed. There are 565 wildlife sanctuaries are present in India which is 3.75% of the geographical area of the country. Okay. So, national park is a highly restricted zone, but in some activities are allowed in the wildlife sanctuary. Okay. So, now understand the difference between national park and wildlife sanctuary. National park, it means for the protection of both flora and fauna. Okay, both plants and animal, but in case of the wildlife sanctuaries, there are only protection for the fauna, that means animal. Okay, cultivation of land is not permitted in the national park, but cultivation of land is permitted in the wildlife sanctuary. Grazing are not allowed in the national park and grazing is allowed in the sanctuary. Okay, so private ownership is not permitted in the national park. Okay, but private ownership is permitted in the sanctuary. Okay. Here we listed some wildlife sanctuary which are present all over the India. Boxa present in West Bengal, Bakira present in Uttar Pradesh, Sariska present in Rajasthan, Modhumalai present in Tamil Nadu, Sonai Rupai present in Assam, Koimur present in Bihar, Sita Nadi present in Chhattisgarh, Nol Sarwar Bird Sanctuary present in Gujarat, Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary present in Jharkhand and Singh Fan present in Nagaland. Okay. Now discuss about the another protected area that is hotspot. The hotspot concept was given by the Norman Myers in the year of 1988. Okay, they are the area with high density of biodiversity which are also the most threatened ones. Ecological hotspot are determined by four factor. First, number of species diversity. Okay, that means number of different species that are represent in a given community. Then degree of endemism that means endemism is the state of a species being found in a single defined geographical location okay such as an island union territory or states or defined zone that is called endemism okay now endemism sometimes are confused with the endangered one okay endemism simply describe the distribution while endangered describe the threats to the population okay now degree to the threat to habitat due to its degradation and fragmentation and fourth one degree of exploitation okay all over the world total 34 hotspots are present but india has four hotspot okay these are the eastern himalayas okay himalayan hotspot is spread all along the northern and northwestern high mountain ranges having snow covered peaks okay then indo burma hotspot extend from bhutan to myanmar covering most of northeast valleys of this region are rich in endemic species okay then western ghats western ghats occur along the western coast of india for a distance of about 1600 kilometer okay in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala extending over Sri Lanka. Okay. And fourth one, Sundaland, which are located in the Andaman Nicobar Island. Okay. Now discuss about the another protected area or in situ conservation is sacred groups. Okay. Sacred groups of India are forest fragments of varying size which are communally protected and which usually have a significant religious connotation for the protecting community, hunting, lodging and others activity strictly prohibited in these patches. Okay, so it is a religious 
place okay and protected by the some community people here we listed some sacred groups in india harithan present in west bengal jogomaya present in rajasthan jahira present in odisha gumpa forest present in arunachal pradesh jaintia hills present in meghalaya okay in this sacred group not a single branch is allowed to cut from this forest as a result some endemic species okay which are very rare have some become extinct elsewhere can be seen to flourish here okay the very famous bishnoi community in rajasthan protect black buck okay religiously black buck is a state animal of punjab and haryana okay now discuss about the ex situ conservation that means off site conservation however when there are situation where an animal or plant is endangered or threatened and needs urgent measure to save it from extinction ex situ conservation is the desirable approach okay in this approach threatened animals and plants are taken out from their natural habitat and placed in a special setting where they can be protected and given special care okay it is only possible for the ex situ conservation the living environment are altered in these conservation sites so there are fewer survival struggle for food water and space okay now discuss about the advantages of ex situ conservation in recent times ex situ conservation has advanced beyond keeping threatened species in enclosures the breeding of species in captivity is reintroduced in the wild is possible for the ex situ conservation now gametes of threatened species can be preserved in viable and fertile condition for longer period using cryo preservation technique okay in cryo preservation technique the component are preserved at minus 196 degree centigrade in liquid nitrogen okay here we listed some method of ex situ conservation different types of ex situ conservation are listed below zoological park botanical garden safari park gene banks seed banks and cryo preservation okay in cryo preservation preservation at minus 196 degree centigrade okay in liquid nitrogen can maintain tissue culture embryos animal cell tissue gametes indefinitely okay cryo preserved material is revived through the special technique when required okay so these are the methods of ex situ conservation geological parks botanical garden safari park gene banks or seed banks and cryo preservation technique okay now understand the fundamental things biodiversity knows no political boundaries and its conservation is therefore collective responsibility of all nations okay the historical convention on biological diversity the earth summit held in rio de janeiro in 1992 in brazil okay called upon all nation to take appropriate measure for conservation of biodiversity and sustainable utilization of its benefit thanks for watching please do like comment share and subscribe science express